participation by a person acknowledging that this meeting is taking place on the unceded and occupied territories of the Coast Salish people, the Squamish, the Musqueam, and the Swift. And Sarah today, this is Astrid, and this is All right, you have 10 minutes for your presentation. And so we 
total demand, 77,000 units of social housing are built every year across Canada, 10,000 units being built to BC. The 2017 federal budget allocated 38 million dollars a year to BC for social housing, which produced some near 190 units annually. The BC provincial government is yet to be released. Although traditionally, it has been federal and provincial governments that have primarily funded social housing construction, it is clear this will no longer suffice. Municipalities must also contribute funds. The province states and the local government act is being in charge that local government should implement policies that support creating social housing. This charter explicitly places power in the hands of municipalities to take initiatives to create social housing, which then start contrast to previous actions of Burnaby City Council as they continue to place the onus on the province. And this brings me to Burnaby's role specifically in funding social housing in the, in the metro town. Burnaby has an extraordinarily large accumulated budgetary surplus, currently sitting at $3.8 billion. This money has been mostly accumulated to building permit and community amenity contributions. In other words, it's been directly stolen from renters by converting their homes into higher price commodities. In the spirit of justice, the People's Plan is calling for Burnaby's $3.8 billion dollar surplus to be redistributed to the community affected by its collection. Burnaby must spend this surplus on non-market housing. Burnaby's $3.8 billion dollars will be put towards buying all of the land and continue to implement the People's Plan in the Metrodown area, or they can construct 19,000 units of social housing. This is all for you protecting and including our current diverse residents. To protect and include our current diverse community, the People's Plan includes provisions to prevent the displacement of residents from their apartments, to deepen our community appreciation and embrace the differences between us as our greatest form of unity, and to develop resources and services to secure and amplify the involvement uh, of community members. In this regard, our two most important policy recommendations for the City of Burnaby are implement an eviction defense policy and to implement a standard of maintenance bylaw. Eviction defense policy has two parts. One, placement for displacement, and two, compensation as a distribution and disincentive. Before a rezoning application begins, city must support a third party to conduct a door-to-door social impact study on the potential impact of the rezoning on the life of the existing residents. The most important consideration for a rezoning is that all residents be housed within the area that they identify as a community in equal or better housing conditions. If the impact of the rezoning cannot be offset, then it should not be permitted. Compensation should work as a form of redistribution of land or profits. As a, as a disincentive to rezoning or <coughs> compensation should be tied to average rent increases suffered by those evicted. As well, eviction defense should include a city program of long term monthly rent subsidy to bring new rents down to their previous levels. Standard of maintenance. When developers buy buildings, tenants report that their new landlord stops spending money on maintenance and repair of apartments. This performs two functions for developer landlords. They save money they would otherwise spend on regular maintenance, and they run down the building so it, so it appears to be dilapidated or past its lifespan when the rezoning application goes before council. The Burnaby enables this abuse because the city does not have the standards of maintenance bylaw. Vancouver, Surrey, and New Westminster all require landlords to maintain their buildings to livable standards. The bylaw must be backed up with rigorous prosecution to protect renters from unscrupulous profiteering and slumlords. Rather than the city department vulnerable to influence, the People's Plan calls for the City of Burnaby to fund an independent tenants advocacy branch to organize tenants in defense of their own rights, enforce city bylaws, advocate for upholding the RTA, do outreach to tenants and research problems they face, and monitor the rental stock and the impact of their evictions. We recommend initial city funding for this project of $250,000 a year. The People's Plan also includes proposals that will protect and foster the diverse income, language, and cultural life of the Metro Town community, but these come second to housing security because we know that if we don't stop gentrification and displacement now, we'll be planning a great thing for the rich people. Lastly, um, it is vital to protect current affordable housing. Independent reports that from both Ben City Credit Union and New England Gospel Mission, both issued in 2016, called for municipalities to stop, step up and stop the loss of low-end market rental apartments. And so the People's Plan also calls for an emergency municipal and provincial laws to designate low-end market rental apartments as a protected form of housing and outlaw their demolition unless they are replaced in advance by an appropriate range of non-market housing. Thank you very much for your presentation. All right.
the next delegation is the Luton 